Day 334. Ezekiel 37-39. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out by his spirit and set me down in the middle of the valley, and it was full of bones. He led me all around among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, and indeed, they were very dry. Then he asked me, Son of man, can these bones come to life? O Lord God, I replied, only you know. And he said to me, Prophesy concerning these bones and tell them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Lord God says to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh grow upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath within you so that you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded. And as I prophesied, there was suddenly a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to bone. As I looked on, tendons appeared on them, flesh grew, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and tell the breath that this is what the Lord God says, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe into these slain, so that they may live. So I prophesied as he had commanded me, and the breath entered them, and they came to life and stood on their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Look, they are saying, our bones are dried up, and our hope has perished, we are cut off. Therefore prophesy and tell them that this is what the Lord God says, O my people, I will open your graves and bring you up from them, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord, when I open your graves and bring you up from them. I will put my spirit in you and you will live, and I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken, and I will do it, declares the Lord. Again the word of the Lord came to me, saying, And you, son of man, take a single stick and write on it, belonging to Judah and to the Israelites associated with him. Then take another stick and write on it, belonging to Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and to all the house of Israel associated with him. Then join them together into one stick, so that they become one in your hand. When your people ask you, won't you explain to us what you mean by these? You are to tell them that this is what the Lord God says, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the tribes of Israel associated with him, and I will put them together with the stick of Judah. I will make them into a single stick, and they will become one in my hand. When the sticks on which you write are in your hand and in full view of the people, you are to tell them that this is what the Lord God says, I will take the Israelites out of the nations to which they have gone. And I will gather them from all around and bring them into their own land. I will make them one nation in the land, on the mountains of Israel, and one king will rule over all of them. Then they will no longer be two nations and will never again be divided into two kingdoms. They will no longer defile themselves with their idols or detestable images, or with any of their transgressions. I will save them from all their apostasies by which they sinned, and I will cleanse them. Then they will be my people, and I will be their God. My servant David will be king over them, and there will be one shepherd for all of them. They will follow my ordinances and keep and observe my statutes. They will live in the land that I gave to my servant Jacob, where your fathers lived. They will live there forever with their children and grandchildren, and my servant David will be their prince forever and I will make a covenant of peace with them, it will be an everlasting covenant. I will establish them and multiply them, and I will set my sanctuary among them forever. My dwelling place will be with them, I will be their God, and they will be my people. Then the nations will know that I the Lord sanctify Israel, when my sanctuary is among them forever. And the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, set your face against Gog of the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal. Prophesy against him and declare that this is what the Lord God says, Behold, I am against you, O Gog, chief prince of Meshech and Tubal. I will turn you around, put hooks in your jaws, and bring you out with all your army, your horses, your horsemen in full armor, and a great company armed with shields and bucklers, all brandishing their swords. Persia, Cush, and Put will accompany them, all with shields and helmets, as well as Gomer with all its troops, and Beth Togerma from the far north with all its troops the many nations with you. Get ready, prepare yourself, you and all your company gathered around you, you will be their guard. After a long time you will be summoned. In the latter years you will enter a land that has recovered from war, 
whose people were gathered from many nations to the mountains of Israel, which had long been desolate. They had been brought out from the nations, and all now dwell securely. You and all your troops, and many peoples with you will go up, advancing like a thunderstorm, you will be like a cloud covering the land. This is what the Lord God says, on that day, thoughts will arise in your mind, and you will devise an evil plan. You will say, I will go up against a land of unwalled villages, I will come against a tranquil people who dwell securely, all of them living without walls or bars or gates, in order to seize the spoil and carry off the plunder. To turn a hand against the desolate places now inhabited and against a people gathered from the nations, who have acquired livestock and possessions and who live at the center of the land. Sheba and Adon and the merchants of Tarshish with all its villages will ask. Have you come to capture the plunder? Have you assembled your hordes to carry away loot, to make off with silver and gold, to take cattle and goods, to seize great spoil? Therefore prophesy, son of man, and tell Gog that this is what the Lord God says, on that day when my people Israel are dwelling securely, will you not take notice of this? And you will come from your place out of the far north, you and many peoples with you, all riding horses, a mighty horde, a huge army. You will advance against my people Israel like a cloud covering the land. It will happen in the latter days, O Gog, that I will bring you against my land, so that the nations may know me when I show myself holy in you before their eyes. This is what the Lord God says, Are you the one of whom I have spoken in former days through my servants, the prophets of Israel, who in those times prophesied for years that I would bring you against them? Now on that day when God comes against the land of Israel, declares the Lord God, my wrath will flare up. In my zeal and fiery rage I proclaim that on that day there will be a great earthquake in the land of Israel. The fish of the sea, the birds of the air, the beasts of the field, every creature that crawls upon the ground, and all mankind on the face of the earth will tremble at my presence. The mountains will be thrown down, the cliffs will collapse, and every wall will fall to the ground. And I will summon a sword against Gog on all my mountains, declares the Lord God, and every man's sword will be against his brother. I will execute judgment upon him with plague and bloodshed. I will pour out torrents of rain, hailstones, fire, and sulfur on him and on his troops and on the many nations with him. I will magnify and sanctify myself, and will reveal myself in the sight of many nations. Then they will know that I am the Lord. As for you, O son of man, prophesy against Gog and declare that this is what the Lord God says, Behold, I am against you, O Gog, chief prince of Meshech and Tubal. I will turn you around, drive you along, bring you up from the far north, and send you against the mountains of Israel. Then I will strike the bow from your left hand and dash down the arrows from your right hand. On the mountains of Israel you will fall, you and all your troops and the nations with you. I will give you as food to every kind of ravenous bird and wild beast. You will fall in the open field, for I have spoken, declares the Lord God. I will send fire on Magog and on those who dwell securely in the coastlands, and they will know that I am the Lord. So I will make my holy name known among my people Israel and will no longer allow it to be profaned. Then the nations will know that I am the Lord, the Holy One in Israel. Yes, it is coming, and it will surely happen, declares the Lord God. This is the day of which I have spoken. Then those who dwell in the cities of Israel will go out, kindle fires, and burn up the weapons, the bucklers, and shields, the bows and arrows, the clubs, and spears. For seven years they will use them for fuel. They will not gather wood from the countryside or cut it from the forests, for they will use the weapons for fuel. They will loot those who looted them and plunder those who plundered them, declares the Lord God. And on that day I will give Gog a burial place in Israel, the valley of the travelers, east of the sea. It will block those who travel through, because Gog and all his hordes will be buried there. So it will be called the valley of Haman Gog. For seven months the house of Israel will be burying them in order to cleanse the land. All the people of the land will bury them, and it will bring them renown on the day I display my glory, declares the Lord God. And men will be employed to continually pass through the land to cleanse it by burying the invaders who remain on the ground. At the end of the seven months they will begin their search. As they pass through the land, anyone who sees a human bone will set up a pillar next to it, until the grave diggers have buried it in the valley of Haman Gog. Even the city will be named Hamanah. And so they will cleanse the land. And as for you, son of man, this is what the Lord God says, call out to every kind of bird and to every beast of the field, assemble and come together from all around to the sacrificial feast that I am preparing for you, a great feast on the mountains of Israel. 
there you will eat flesh and drink blood. You will eat the flesh of the mighty and drink the blood of the princes of the earth as though they were rams, lambs, goats, and bulls, all the fattened animals of Bashan. At the sacrifice I am preparing, you will eat fat until you are gorged and drink blood until you are drunk. And at my table you will eat your fill of horses and riders, of mighty men and warriors of every kind, declares the Lord God. I will display my glory among the nations, and all the nations will see the judgment that I execute and the hand that I lay upon them. From that day forward the house of Israel will know that I am the Lord their God. And the nations will know that the house of Israel went into exile for their iniquity, because they were unfaithful to me. So I hid my face from them and delivered them into the hands of their enemies, so that they all fell by the sword. I dealt with them according to their uncleanness and transgressions, and I hid my face from them. Therefore this is what the Lord God says, Now I will restore Jacob from captivity and will have compassion on the whole house of Israel, and I will be jealous for my holy name. They will forget their disgrace and all the treachery they committed against me, when they dwell securely in their land, with no one to frighten them. When I bring them back from the peoples and gather them out of the lands of their enemies, I will show my holiness in them in the sight of many nations. Then they will know that I am the Lord their God, when I regather them to their own land, not leaving any of them behind after their exile among the nations. And I will no longer hide my face from them, for I will pour out my spirit on the house of Israel, declares the Lord God. 2 Peter 2 Now there were also false prophets among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you. They will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the master who bought them, bringing swift destruction on themselves. Many will follow in their depravity, and because of them the way of truth will be defamed. In their greed, these false teachers will exploit you with deceptive words. The long-standing verdict against them remains in force, and their destruction does not sleep. For if God did not spare the angels when they sinned, but cast them deep into hell, placing them in chains of darkness to be held for judgment, if he did not spare the ancient world when he brought the flood on its ungodly people, but preserved Noah, a preacher of righteousness. Among the eight, if he condemned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah to destruction, reducing them to ashes as an example of what is coming on the ungodly, and if he rescued Lot, a righteous man distressed by the depraved conduct of the lawless, for that righteous man, living among them day after day, was tormented in his righteous soul by the lawless deeds he saw and heard, if all this is so, then the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from trials and to hold the unrighteous for punishment on the day of judgment. Such punishment is specially reserved for those who indulge the corrupt desires of the flesh and despise authority. Bold and self-willed, they are unafraid to slander glorious beings. Yet not even angels, though greater in strength and power, dare to bring such slanderous charges against them before the Lord. These men are like irrational animals, creatures of instinct, born to be captured and destroyed. They blaspheme in matters they do not understand, and like such creatures, they too will be destroyed. The harm they will suffer is the wages of their wickedness. They consider it a pleasure to carouse in broad daylight. They are blots and blemishes, reveling in their deception as they feast with you. Their eyes are full of adultery, their desire for sin is never satisfied, they seduce the unstable. They are accursed children with hearts trained in greed. They have left the straight way and wandered off to follow the way of Balaam son of Beer, who loved the wages of wickedness. But he was rebuked for his transgression by a donkey, otherwise without speech, that spoke with a man's voice and restrained the prophet's madness. These men are springs without water and mists driven by a storm. Blackest darkness is reserved for them. With lofty but empty words, they appeal to the sensual passions of the flesh and entice those who are just escaping from others who live in error. They promise them freedom, while they themselves are slaves to depravity. For a man is a slave to whatever has mastered him. If indeed they have escaped the corruption of the world through the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, only to be entangled and overcome by it again, their final condition is worse than it was at first. It would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than to have known it and then to turn away from the holy commandment passed on to them. Of them the proverbs are true, a dog returns to its vomit, and, a sow that is washed goes back to her wallowing in the mud.